Good evening. This is uh, Colonel Chris Ruga, Commander of the U.S. Army Garrison, Alaska. I'd like to welcome you to the June uh, 2020 uh, Fort Wainwright uh, Housing Town Hall. Uh, so tonight we have uh, with us uh, General, Major General Peter Andrzejczyk, the Commander of U.S. Army Garrison, Alaska. Um, also in the room we've got uh, Mr. Ron Johnson, Project Manager to, for North Haven Communities, off to my right, who's also going to be here ready to answer any questions you have from North Haven Community. Um, so the way we've got set th things set up for tonight, we've got a few people in the room, all socially distanced and wearing uh, face coverings. Um, we've got, um, and then we've got the folks that are out online. So we've got about an hour um, that we're going to be able to address some uh, frequently asked questions, some information, there are some questions that have come in from our resident advisory board over the last couple months. Um, and then also provide you some really key information from the garrison perspective uh, and from the North Haven community perspective. And then hopefully uh, allow some time for some additional questions if they aren't amongst those that we answer early on. And so we will, uh, if we have folks in the room that have questions, uh, we'll take those as, and we'll also uh, take any that come in online. Uh, we'll try and get those fed up here so we can answer those um, in person and then we'll follow up with, uh, with a digital answer uh, as well. So uh, before I get any further, I'd like to turn it over for, to Major General Andrzejczyk for his opening remarks, sir. Approach and we can do a minimum as 
and the potential strike. We had maintained a consistent relation and also been a good partner of the installation so that we can do new support. Uh, and we have to say, as you say, as every people likes to, uh, we can get a good business approach uh, and so that we minimize the potential storage. Uh, so we're going to take all the right steps and uh, be prepared that uh, we can continue to do this. Um, I think we need to try to uh, develop that sense of this. So I appreciate that uh, this stuff, all the work that went into my team to do some of this, and I appreciate that uh, everything you're doing for us, and I'll turn it back over to you later. All right, thanks, sir. Appreciate it. So, uh, so first topic of discussion uh, tonight, uh, General Andrzejczyk mentioned uh, some of the very most current COVID uh, information that, that's out there. Um, I'd actually like to skip forward a couple slides and uh, talk about COVID-19 as it relates really to housing specifically and kind of why we're here and so some, some updates. Uh, so if you're not tracking, uh, maintenance has been back on for about a month. Um, so North Haven's maintenance uh, team is out and about doing routine maintenance calls. They were, always doing, they were always doing emergency, but they're back on routine. Right now have no backlog. Um, so if you've got something out there from a maintenance perspective, call it into North Haven and they'll take care of it. Uh, playgrounds reopened a couple weeks ago. Um, we would ask that uh, with that there are those uh, hygiene. When they're inside uh, six feet of, of other kids, recognize the challenges of this, but uh, it goes with keeping our community safe. And then really, when you, if your kids are out there playing on them, that they wash their hands uh, immediately upon uh, finish, finishing playing. Um, the uh, North Haven community offices uh, are still open, but by appointment only. Um, but, uh, please call them and, uh, and contact them for any questions you have. Um, we've got a uh, yard sale, so we've turned back on here starting in the next, uh, next little bit. I think we, we approved that uh, last week. And so the process for yard sales, which a lot of folks ask about, is really call North Haven. Um, and we'll, we're doing it on a case-by-case -case basis for an individual yard sale permit on Saturdays. And the, the intent of doing that is that you as a member of the community who wants to have a yard sale will have the opportunity to really kind of review the uh, COVID-19 safety measures that uh, we're asking you to uh, take, uh, accomplish uh, for a safe conduct of that yard sale and really validate you're doing that. And then we're gonna ask that you be very vigilant when you go back out in, in enforcing that within your uh, driveway space while you're conducting that so you keep the community safe. Um, and the really last thing I'd, I'd like to touch with uh, COVID-19 specifically as regards to housing and General Andresiak talked about it a little bit is really uh, the installation access for family members. We have a lot of questions that have been coming in over the last uh, you know, several weeks um, really hit kind of a crescendo I think over the weekend on uh, Facebook and, and social media. And, and what I would really like to highlight here is I, we recognize that family members want to come and visit. Um, and are going to come and visit and completely understand and we welcome that. Right now, even though the state is doing what they're doing from a uh, access to the state uh, to fly in and have a COVID test within 72 hours of arriving and then a second one within uh, seven to 10 days, our threshold, our risk threshold for uh, the installation is significantly higher. And so we are still maintaining that 14-day requirement. We are, as General Andrzejczyk said, reviewing it consistently. But at this moment, if you are coming from out of state, regardless of whether you're a service member, family member, or visiting family member who is going to stay on the installation, you should be calling public health and you should expect to be told to quarantine for 14 days. As soon as that changes, if that changes, we absolutely will let the community know. We'll have updates on the USERAC webpage, which is always the best place to get information on all things COVID-19 for uh, US Army in Alaska. And we'll uh, you know, get those posted on the Garrison webpage uh, reference installation access. So that's kind of where we're at, just bottom lining it expect and plan on that 14 days. If it changes, we'll let you know. And go to the next slide. So we have uh, 
of the, of the topics that I w really wanted to highlight up front, one of them is River Road Bridge. Uh, and the reason we're highlighting this up front is that River Road Bridge has a significant impact to a large sector of the community. I personally use Trainer Gate the majority of times that I leave the installation. And so we were supposed to start a bridge project in June. Um, that has been delayed due some, to some material uh, fabrication uh, slowdowns in the lower 48 due to COVID. And so right now we're projecting that construction will start on River Road Bridge around the 6th of July, so right after the 4th of July weekend. Um, we recognize that this is absolutely suboptimal because we will have both River Road Bridge and Bailey Bridge offline for a period of time. And they'll probably have an overlap of about two months is what we're looking at right now. Um, so we, the DPW team working with the contractors will do everything they can to maximize uh, the speed and pace of things while keeping the, uh, the dollar amount realistic. And uh, we've had some questions in the past, why aren't we working 24 seven to make this happen? Yes, you can work nearly 24 seven in Alaska, but it's also noisy when it's in proximity to people who are trying to sleep. And the cost goes up exponentially for the taxpayers when you start doing things around the clock. And so th this is where we're at is uh, we've got the, the contract let for a uh, four month time frame, hopefully less than that, but it'll start somewhere around the 6th of July. Um, the community will have uh, a good 48 hours of notice, and we've got signs located at either end of the, uh, of the River Road Bridge that let you know 48 hours from now the bridge will be closed, so you can plan accordingly to be able to come in the either Badger Gate or um, the main gate. All right, uh, next thing I'd like to, to talk about is our resident advisory board. So uh, earlier this year, North Haven Communities established a resident advisory board, and these are members of uh, our community, your communities, uh, for each of the neighborhoods that represent you. And so, uh, so as I talk, I've got two slides. It's got the, the uh, members of the resident advisory board for, for each of the communities, but the, and I'll go through those real quick. First one, uh, we've got uh, Alicia Manning from Northtown, Emily Banginger from uh, Northtown and uh, Chena Bend, uh, Nikki Culver from Tanama, Tanana Trails and Sitku Basin, uh, Ashley Boston from Northern Lights and Garish Heights, um, Kayla Orbick from Southern Cross, Jamie Paul for uh, Teku Gardens and Bear Paw, and Rebecca Taylor for Denali Village. And so these seven ladies are the representatives for you and your communities. And, and how does that happen? So on a monthly basis, the uh, resident advisory board members meet with the North Haven community's uh, leadership. They meet with me. Uh, also on the line, we have member representatives from different parts of the uh, installation staff, uh, director of emergency services, director of public works, uh, to be able to kind of bring in questions that you as a community have. And so we've got a lot of questions that have come in over the last several months as we've started this through the Resident Advisory Board. And what we've got queued up is a couple, uh, couple slides with some, uh, some topic headings uh, for some of those areas that have been brought up for the Resident Advisory Board. And so what I'm gonna do is kind of read through some of these questions, and this is so as we kind of get into the town hall give and take piece of things. This is how we're working this a little virtually this time as we're gonna address some of the areas that have been brought up for the Resident Advisory Board. Uh, some of these I may step to the side and let uh, Mr. Johnson step in and give a little bit more information from the uh, North Haven community standpoint. And then uh, we'll eventually close out and be able to get to some questions from uh, the community here at the end. So on this uh, first slide, I've got, uh, from a safety perspective, we've got several um, uh, questions that have come in from the community reference open flames and in particular tiki torches because you're like uh, like me your backyard is full of mosquitoes it's ridiculous um, every time I walk out with the dog I get at least three mosquito bites um, so uh, the bottom line on tiki torches is yes they are an open flame and they actually do require an open flame permit just like having a fire pit in your backyard and so how you go about doing this and being authorized to have that is calling uh, the fire prevention office, uh, telling them, hey, I'm going to have uh, uh, open flame, got tiki torches, they'll kind of run you through a safety brief and be able to give you a permit for that year. Uh, but they, we, bottom line, we just want to make sure everybody's being safe. Tiki torches can get knocked over by kids. They can start, uh, you know, start fires in the area and we just want to prevent that. So um, please call the uh, fire prevention office. Um, I'll toss the number up here and we'll put it in the uh, online as well, but it's 907-353-9164. Uh, 
Uh, questions about uh, the walking path at Siku Basin. So we've got a, uh, a walking gate over near Siku Basin. The question is, can we get, uh, get access to that? And we closed that down uh, about the same time we shut everything down with COVID. And for right now, we're going to keep it closed just because of the, uh, the volume that that has and the personnel it requires to keep that open. Once we get back into the school year time frame, re recognizing that we have lots of kids that uh, go in and out that gate to and from school, assuming uh, the uh, Fairbanks North Star Borough school system is back in class, we'll reevaluate that and absolutely try and make it as convenient on the community. Um, and then traffic calming questions. We, uh, if you've noticed, there have been a bunch of uh, traffic calming uh, measures around the installation. Uh, one of the more obvious ones for the whole community is right near the headquarters on Gaffney Road. There have been several others. Um, and I also recognize that there are concerns out in the community about uh, cars going quickly through neighborhoods. And in particular, uh, questions about uh, near uh, along 6th Street. So a couple things uh, with these is when, you, when we do get these in place, we do get uh, the traffic calming measures, generally they're in areas that are supposed to be at 20 miles an hour and we recognize that folks are going much faster than that. And so these traffic calming measures are generally made to slow folks down to that speed limit. They do have, while the white speed limit sign still says 20 miles an hour, they do have some warning signs near those traffic calming measures that say 10 miles an hour, and that's an advisory speed, speed so that when you go over, you don't damage your car, you don't catch air, um, and you have a safe transit there and really ultimately keeps you at that consistent 20, 20 miles an hour throughout the, uh, the total area. Um, and so. Uh, we've got that, and then in neighborhoods, we've got speed limits that are 15 miles an hour. Some neighborhoods, we, uh, the way the roads are, are really not an issue. We have the other neighborhoods where they are straight shots, or people use those uh, neighborhoods as cut-throughs uh, from one point to another. And so what we're, what we're doing with this is, without getting into detail on every single street corner, uh, the re Resident Advisory Board has brought up s uh, several areas of concern, and both the Garrison uh, Public Works, um, Director of Emergency Services, and North Haven are actively looking at those areas to determine what the best courses of action, if they're installing additional uh, stop signs at intersections that maybe, maybe it's a two-way intersection and we may need to do a four-way intersection to slow the traffic down, put in some temporary calming measures. Um, some of these uh, other calming measures we have are about a year out um, in, in the process. So once we, so stuff we decide we're gonna do now would not be until next summer at the earliest, um, just the way the contracting piece of things works. But we're absolutely looking at all of those and, and hope really to, to get things slowed down and safer for the community. So if you've got specific questions about uh, any areas, please uh, put those in the uh, comments on Facebook. And with those specific things, we will try to, to type in an answer rather than uh, you know, go into an in-depth answer for, for here. But we'll, we'll get answers to everybody. Uh, the other piece of things we will try and do in the near future is uh, some of those known areas. Uh, DES and the MPs are going to bring over some of their mobile speed uh, radar, and we actually we do increase patrols. So if you're seeing from a community aspect uh, vehicles moving quickly, too quickly for that area, please call them into the MPs. This is not uh, erroneous reporting stuff that we do. This is absolutely what we want and what the MPs want. We need to know where those trouble spots are. So. We can send additional MPs there and track them. And if you've got the description, make, model, and, and uh, license plate of the car, all the better. The MPs would love that information. Um, so I'm going to we'll flip to the policies piece of things. Um, so we've got several, uh, several policy questions uh, to address. And one of them is some questions on lease extensions. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Johnson to talk about those. Um, with the deployment that we had um, this last fall and then the, the COVID-19 policy changes in regards to PCSing, uh, some folks were here longer than they thought they were going to be and, and that interrupted the normal PCS cycle. So we did get a lot of questions about um, how that would affect uh, the leases. And so we've worked with everybody on an individual basis that's, that's come forward and expressed uh, concern. But the bottom line is, um, you, you know, you're here as long as your orders uh, have you here. And if that's past what your original DROS is, um, that's not an issue for us. We can work with you um, on a month-to-month -month basis if need be. Uh, another concern was if somebody um, had to leave 
before their original DROS, would that be an issue if they broke their lease? If you have orders uh, to PCS, there's no issue with you breaking your lease whatsoever. So um, those were some of the, the questions around leases. If you have another one, please uh, text that in or, or write it in on social media and, and we'll answer that as well. Thanks, Mr. Johnson. So um, a couple of the other uh, areas we've got in here, parking, uh, there we recognize that our, our footprint on Fort Wainwright is dated. Uh, many of the houses and housing areas were built in the 1950s, uh, and quite honestly, at that time, apparently parking was not a huge consideration when those footprints were put in, and so we recognize that's a challenge in some areas. We recognize that uh, whether it's on streets uh, that sometimes have issue with two-way traffic or if it's in some of our eightplex uh, buildings that have whether they have garages or not there is limited uh, space in those community parking lots um, it is a challenge uh, long term um, in all of the out year development plans that north haven has they are act actively planning on increasing the parking space and addressing that but th to do that for many of our communities it's going to be in the out years when we're able to do some demolition and rebuilding of communities so in the short term, uh, what we're doing is um, really kind of addressing, addressing it in a couple ways. Um, the uh, parking in uh, community areas, uh, there should be no parking signs uh, you know, next to garages and, and some of those areas. Those are absolutely no parking areas, and those are areas where the MPs are absolutely the right answer if somebody is blocking a your parking spot um, to to be able to call in and say hey I've got an issue and please come address that um, some of the other areas we've got is uh, not putting or problems we have is uh, oversized vehicles not putting uh, recreational vehicles in some of those areas and uh, you know blocking that for others being considerate um, really trying to limit uh, your number of vehicles in your parking areas. If you've got, uh, I think each house has roughly uh, two parking spots associated with it, and we've got some families that have three or more vehicles, uh, being considerate and finding an alternate parking lot somewhere aside. And if you've got questions on where you can park, North Haven can absolutely help in identifying some of those alternate parking places around the installation. And if they've got concerns, they can come to Garrison. I think we've, we have designated some places around the Garrison as some uh, alternate temporary uh, places for, for people to park with excess vehicles um, along those lines. So, um, Ron, is there anything else you've got on parking that you want to mention? Okay. Um, so, I think bottom line, it's suboptimal in a lot of cases. Uh, we, I think it's really it's two things. It's being considerate uh, of your neighbors with the limited parking spots that we have, and it's truly, it's, it's again, kind of like with uh, the speeding. If you see somebody that's blocking your area um, and has got an issue, please please call the MPs, um, and we will document that. Um, and hopefully, hopefully they'll be gone, and they're in and out in a few minutes, and they're just making a drop off and a delivery. But if they're parking there persistently, the MPs get there and, and can address that. Um, I got a couple others uh, on the policies. Uh, playground supervision, folks asked to uh, remind, uh, we had a couple of folks with the RAB that asked, asked us to remind parents uh, the supervision requirements. Please supervise your kids on the playgrounds. Um, and, and it really kind of goes in with the COVID piece of things. If uh, kids, if you're not there, kids aren't going to be doing what they're supposed to be doing, wearing their mask and, uh, and hand washing and things of that nature. So they're probably not the ones reading the signs. I would trust uh, the adults to go read the signs and make sure that's enforced. So again, please, uh, please supervise your kids on the, the playgrounds. Uh, had some questions about campers uh, being able to be utilized as alternate uh, quarantine sites, um, being able to put in driveways. And generally speaking, uh, the installation policy on campers and RVs in driveways is we generally don't allow that for uh, long-term storage. Uh, you can coordinate with uh, North Haven to be able to pull those into your driveway to load up you know, a day or two before your camping trip and roll out or when you very first get here until you've had an opportunity to get down to Outdoor Rec and make a, uh, a reservation over at the uh, RV storage lot. But in general, that's not something we ask you to do. However, I, I, I do think, and we've talked, North Haven has stated in these cases, you know, we're in a COVID environment, if there is uh, a case when you want to use a RV from a, for a uh, alternate um, 
quarantine site. That is something we could absolutely entertain on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm not saying there's a blanket policy that that can be done, um, but depending on the parking situation with you and your neighbors and how it fits in the area and making sure we're not blocking off traffic, we will absolutely look at that in order as a mechanism of keeping the community safe during the COVID uh, um, crisis here. And then uh, finally on policies, I'm going to turn this one uh, back over to Mr. Johnson here in a second. It's really kind of addressed BAH, and we always kind of have questions on why is uh, my full BAH taken. And the short answer on, uh, on why BAH is taken is that is the agreement between the Army and all of our uh, partners that run housing um, is that BAH it covers your rent and your utilities if you live on the installation. Recognize that there are some housing areas at different installations that may charge a little bit less for some housing, and we do have a couple of those here, and I'm going to let uh, Mr. Johnson address those particulars as far as it goes for Fort Wainwright. Okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, that's absolutely right. So here at Fort Wainwright, uh, normally we, we do charge full rent, and there is no concession, and a concession is if we were to, to refund back some of your BAH uh, based on either our occupancy or some promotional type um, operations that we're running to try to increase our occupancy. As Chris stated, uh, when these projects were set up, that's the formula that was used is that the revenue for the projects comes from the BAH um, and it does include a percentage of that supposed to go to your utilities and the rest basically goes to the project. So. 96% of your BAH stays here uh, and goes right back into the project. 4% of that goes back into um, our revenue, which uh, funds the project. So one of the questions that we had was, uh, why am I paying full BAH uh, for the home I live in? So right now, currently, we do have one set of homes. It's the old Northern Lights, um, two bedroom, no garage uh, units that are our oldest units. We have, we have given a concession on that. The rent is $1,450, and that's about $160 below what the BAH is for that band of home. Um, and that's simply because of the occupancy level of those homes. Across the rest of the installation, the occupancy is high enough that we don't have to offer concessions to try to get people to move in. Occasionally, you'll see a concession where for some of these homes that don't have garages, um, we may run a special in the winter where if you sign up to rent one of those homes, um, we'll give you an auto start uh, since, you don't have, uh, since you don't have a garage. So essentially, that's, that's what happens with the BAH. If you have a specific question about it, please send that in and we'll, we'll address that specific question. All right, and, and I've got a few uh, maintenance topics that I'll try and cover, and if Mr. Johnson, if I don't hit any of these correctly, you know, feel free to yell at me and, and hop in here. So, um, so maintenance, uh, some questions about fence sizes. So we have, uh, right now we've got uh, limits on the height of fence. Uh, I think it's four feet, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, four feet is the, the height of fence, and there are questions on why can't I have a higher fence in my yard, and I recognize that some people have Great Danes and other dogs that you know, may just step right over a four-foot fence. Uh, the bottom line uh, from the installation perspective is uniformity and having a, a nice-looking, uh, consistent installation, and so we, we've decided that you know, four feet is the standard. Um, if you're choosing to have a larger dog, that is a choice, and uh, you know, I would ask that you either train train the dog or you know put them on a leash and walk. I know that's not ideal in that cases, but in those cases, but that that's where we're at with the installation. We're not having uh, all kinds of different fences all over the place. Um, uh, paint policy question about paint policy. What colors can I paint? And uh, bottom line is North Haven has three different colors of paint that they. Uh, have approved that you can paint your uh, quarters and that you do not have to paint after you leave. And uh, I think I've got the, the colors listed here. Folks are, for, folks are interested, but the bottom line is those three colors. Um, if you don't have those from North Haven, you can reach out to North Haven. They can provide those, uh, those colors on where to get those. Um, and other ones, you're able to paint, but you're going to have to paint over things before uh, and get them all primed and ready to go. Uh, before you come back, and I think that's, uh, is that, am I correct, Todd, or is that a no? In, in a nutshell, yes, sir, if they want specific questions, they can send Okay, so if you've got questions, uh, got, got questions, please um, 
contact North Haven and ask on those. Um, so um, landscaping, so North Haven uh, does landscaping outside your back fences. So uh, North Haven's uh, contractor uh, Mainscape does all of the uh, grass cutting and hedge trimming um, in the areas. Uh, so they, they're consistently doing that. Uh, we've got questions you know, every day of the week they're out doing it. So questions and concerns that most often are received are why do they start so early? And so right now, uh, Mainscape starts at 0730 um, doing their construction. And the reason they start at 730 is uh, based on the timing, that's, how, that's what they need to be able to accomplish keeping our installation cut, trimmed, and, and looking good. Um, every time we, st if you start backing that up to eight, then we start, you know, cutting two and a half hours of work time out of the out of every single week, and that really starts compounding. So, uh, seven thirty is the negotiated piece of things. Um, if you've got, uh, if you don't want North Haven uh, cutting your grass and you want to maintain the area outside your fence, they're they are amenable to discuss that, um, and so reach out to them and share that with them. Um, but uh, major hedge trimming in all neighborhoods is kind of, kind of taking place now. If in my, most of the areas, it, it has taken place. Um, but I see the, the teams out on a regular basis. Um, and you're absolutely encouraged to plant flowers while maybe outside your fence. If you want to plant flowers in those uh, flower beds in front of your houses, absolutely. So it kind of goes back to the, the fence thing on why don't we want fences all over the place because we do want a uniform, nice looking community. If you want to plant flowers and maintain them to in, enhance the uh, the appearance of the, the community uh, as we drive through, please do that. Um, there's some, folks have asked through the RAB about uh, some banging pipes, so we obviously we've got uh, heat, uh, steam heat throughout the installation, and sometimes uh, just the, the way that works causes uh, some banging pipes. If you have those, that's absolutely a, uh, something to call and talk to maintenance on. Uh, there's a lot of things that they can do to address those. Um, so if you have not called, there, there's your answer on that one. Um, doggy bags, uh, the, across, across the installation, we do have a bunch of uh, dog bag, um, dog disposal locations. It has been brought up that and this is outside North Haven's areas as well. So, so North Haven has uh, trash cans and disposal areas, maybe not necessarily having doggy bags at every single playground, but there's at least trash cans for you to dispose of your uh, your dog's uh, refuse at all the playgrounds. I think we have uh, um, dog bag spots along many of the trails along Gaffney. Uh, we do have a couple places that we are going to look at some additional ones. Engineer Park was one that was mentioned and brought up by the uh, Resident Advisory Board. So we will look at that. But in short, the other piece of the thing is, is really when you're out walking your dog, you know, what we do, uh, we've got the little thing hanging on the dog leash and we pick up the, the uh, dog feces immediately after the, the dog goes to the bathroom when we're out walking them and it may, may mean we're carrying it for a couple hundred meters till we get to the nearest bag. Recognize that is maybe not the absolute most convenient. Sometimes we forget, you know, you forget your bags. And so we'll, we'll look at trying to increase that number, but I would ask that everybody plan on taking bags with you because you know what your dog's gonna do while he's out walking. All right, so those are uh, kind of the, the areas that were brought up as, um, through resident advisory board um, repeatedly. Um, you know, if, if there are questions, and we got some members of resident advisory board that are here in the audience, so if you guys have questions that I, we didn't address, please jog our memory and we'll try to readdress them for the group. Um, I would like to move on uh, in the interest of time uh, to talk uh, unidirectional flushing. Um, so if you're, if you're new to Fort Wainwright, uh, we do flush all of the uh, hydrants every spring, um, and with that comes movement of sediment that accumulates in the pipes over the winter. Um, what this can cause is some discoloration in the water. Uh, last year, uh, between Doyon Utilities and North Haven, there was a concerted effort, and our DPW, a concerted effort to map the flow of the, uh, the pipes on the installation, and so as we we open those hydrants in a program manner so it ultimately moves the sediment all the way out in one direction and we aren't just stirring it up. And so we put a lot of time and effort into that and we think we've more or less cracked the code. There's still gonna be some sediment on there, but we have already started uh, doing this uh, unidirectional flushing. There's a map that will pop up on the screen that's got the areas and the rough timelines that uh, Flushing will occur. Um, some of it started on, on West Post earlier this month and will continue through the end of the month. And then uh, North Post at uh, end of the month, beginning of July, and then South Post 
uh, through, throughout the month of July. And so the bottom line on this, um, if you do experience some discolored water, uh, two things to remember, it is perfectly safe. These are natural uh, sediments that occur in our water in Alaska. So it doesn't matter if you're on Fort Wainwright or you go to North Pole or somewhere else, you're, when it sits and accumulates, you're going to have these, uh, these sediments um, in the water. Let your taps run for a period of time. It should clear out relatively quickly uh, in the course of a few minutes. Um, if it does not, if it persists for a period of time, that's where we would say go ahead and call North Haven and let them know. There could be a scenario where there's something uh, that didn't go right at, at, with Noyon's flushing and they need to be made aware of it. Um, and that would be an instance where we'd ask for you to call, uh, call North Haven. But in, in generally speaking, what we've already started this and uh, it's been going pretty well. So. Um, and then, so next couple slides, uh, just kind of update uh, a couple things on North Haven events. And uh, Ron, if you want to jump in on any of these, but the bottom line is uh, uh, North Haven's really conducting a lot of their events virtually. North Haven is incredibly great about doing community events. Uh, typically, they're in person, um, but they're really doing a lot of stuff to really maximize uh, the virtual experience. And so some of these things are, you know, coming up, we got Father's Day this weekend, so don't forget uh, to tell your dad happy Father's Day, um, but some of the best dad jokes that are out there. Um, some things just to kind of live, liven things up. So those are out there. Um, and then uh, we also got the uh, resident portal. And Ron, do you want to talk about the resident portal a little bit? And advice? Yes, so I'll, thank you. Um, I'll address some resident events real quick and then I'll transition over. So um, as, as you know, Mary uh, Burnham, our, she's really our resident. Um, relations person. She's very active in the events that we do for the residents. COVID's really put a, a dent in that. And so we've had to be as creative and uh, as we can be. And one way to do that is virtually. So uh, she's done everything from cooking with Mr. Mary, which was one of our most popular programs that we ran out of the community center to where people could uh, participate in cooking classes. Uh, they've recorded some of those and posted them as well. So they're trying everything they can to continue those. And, and we're also working with the installation um, recovery working group. And the focus there is how do we get back to some sense of normalcy? So um, as we work with the working group, we're looking at when we can do and how we can do some of our activities in real time instead of just virtually. Um, our resident portal, uh, one of the things that we really strive to work on is communicating with the residents. Um, that's really one of the reasons why the RAB uh, was brought about. Um, you know, that's just another way to, to have communication between the residents, the command, and, and the project. The resident portal is really a way for you to communicate with uh, the project. And so when it comes, and it actually came in very handy during the COVID uh, situation you can put in your work orders uh, through uh, rent cafe or on your resident portal online uh, but it allows you to do everything from take a picture of what your issue is send it in with a work order if our maintenance folks have permission to enter your home um, they can go in fix the issue take a picture of it upload it and then you can check um, remotely to see if if your issue is fixed and what it looked like when it was done so just a, another way to communicate and I'll throw in the red flag system that you're probably aware of um, which is a new communication platform that we're using that allows um, texting uh, robocalls and emails so it'll generate out resident events give you some marketing or notice heads up as well as uh, community interest type stuff All right, thanks, Ron. So um, at this point, we'll open up to some uh, questions. Uh, that's uh, and we've got uh, a, anything related to housing. We're we're up here. We've got probably about another good 20 minutes um, left in our hour. So opportunity to have questions. I'll open it up to the room first, and then uh, we'll see if we got any online um, that have come in. So any of our uh, RAB members have anything that we missed that wasn't addressed? That we bring up. Okay. All right. We have any uh, any questions that have come in online? So I have a question for you. When do you get involved with housing as part of this housing concerns? When do you get involved? Okay. So the question was, when do I, as garrison commander, get involved with housing concerns? Um, and so I, I would say, generally, we try just with most everything else, we try and handle things at the lowest lowest level. Um, 
I will absolutely get concerned if we can't get resolution at uh, you know working through North Haven. So I would say if it's a housing concern, first approach is always to contact North Haven to find out if it's uh, something that can be handled. Um, reference housing. If it's reference um, neighbors and uh, um, you know, domestic disputes and things like that, um, it may be very appropriate to call uh, call the MPs if if appropriate. Again. While some folks may think calling the MPs is a drastic measure, maybe it's appropriate. That's actually handling things at the lowest level. Ultimately, if it needs to get up to me, I, I can do that. Um, but uh, And I will tell you, so we get ICE comments that come in. Uh, generally, if you put your ICE comment in and you uh, address it to North Haven, I'm going to see all those. I see those, uh, Sergeant Major Prizer and Ms. Miller, uh, the garrison deputy. We, we all see those and we read those uh, just like we do with all the other ICE comments. Um, but generally, uh, unless it's something that we need to reach out immediately, um, in that case, we'll let North Haven or the housing office address it. There may be a call that we make to North Haven or the housing office to make sure it's going to be addressed in a quick, timely manner, um, but we may not pick up the phone and actually call. Um, if it is something that is, um, and so we will, we will see those. Um, if it's something that uh, you really want to highlight, there's also the ability to get it straight to the garrison commander, and it does come straight to me on the ICE uh, comments, and so I will I'll respond to all those. And so anything anything that's come in to me um, where you've left your name and contact information, I'd say that's a big one because probably 90% of the comments that we get in on ICE, folks do not leave their contact information, and so it's very difficult to follow up as much as we want to. Um, you will get contacted. Is that Answer or okay. Yes, ma'am. So the question is, what's the mission? What's North Haven mission for the family? And and really, it's you know our mission is to provide um, good quality of life and a sense of community where families can live and thrive. So the question is, and I'll paraphrase for you because I don't know if everyone can hear, is I'm a resident, I've lived here five years, uh, I have issues, but I'm not satisfied with the resolution. So um, the first thing in general, and I'll speak this in general, I'll be happy to talk to you specifically afterwards with Colonel Ruga and anyone else here. But in general, um, as Colonel Ruga said, the first step is go to the go to your your community manager or bring it to the attention of the North Haven project leadership, either myself or, or Todd Wentland. Um, if you're not satisfied with that, then you know really your, your first advocate is the housing office. So the RCI office, Lori, her job is to ensure that we're doing our job and that, that soldiers and their families are being taken care of. So um, a lot of times residents aren't satisfied with the answer that they get, and so that's the other option is to go with RCI. So. If RCI is working with you and you're not satisfied with, with their help and their response, oftentimes that's when it will go to Colonel Ruga's level. And then Colonel Ruga may call us all in and talk about, okay, what's, what's the issue and what are we doing to resolve it? And even sometimes that, that helps and sometimes it doesn't. And, uh, and what I would say is don't give up. Continue to, to ask. Now, a new process that we have as well that's uh, really just just getting established is the resident advisory board um, in the resident advisory board there is a, a process for issue resolution um, however what i'd say in your specific instance is that it's already at the highest level so um, you know that's more of a general if you if you know your rab members and i encourage everybody to find out who your rab member is and give all your feedback good and bad to them so they can share it with us um, but if you're not satisfied, that's another issue where you can bring it to them. They'll bring the issue up. We all try to resolve it during the RAB. If we're unsuccessful or if you're not satisfied, then you still have those, those options to do that. But we'll be more than happy to stay after, and you can talk to all of us at the same time. I just want to make sure that know what their options are. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so the bottom line is our job is to provide a good quality of life and, and the, the more satisfied residents are, the better it is for us. And so whether people, you specifically believe that or not, um, that is our intent and that's our mission. Everybody that works for NHC is here because they want to be here and they, they love taking care of our residents. Thank you. I, I agree. Okay. Any other uh, questions in the room? Sir, we have a question about the possibility of building a dog park on the north side of the post. Okay. Possibility of building a dog park on the north side of post. Yes. Talk that one. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, that actually came up uh, through, I think, through ICE as well as through the RAB. And so we took that for action and we are looking at courses of action for establishing a dog park on the north side of post. We already have one on the south side. And uh, there is an area in the north town, kind of sort of by engineer park area that we are looking at. We got to make sure it complies with all the, uh, the Alaska Department of Environmental Conservation and EPA requirements for um, the clean water program, uh, essentially with the dog park. Uh, if you don't pick up the feces, you get a lot of dog feces, and that area is fairly close to the river, and you have to look at the drainage that goes there. So um, we are looking at that. We have some options, and it's something that, that we would like to do. Uh, another question related to dog park came up about can we get some more amenities for the current dog park, and we are looking at that as well, too. So we, we hear your feedback, and we'll keep you informed of your action, but I'll tell you that both of those are, are – uh, taken for action right now. Okay, um, so I understand that uh, General Andrzejewski's uh, comments did not come through initially, so we're going to, uh, sir, we're going to allow you to get the opportunity to move, we'll get the mic closer to the uh, to the speakers here so that uh, hopefully picks up better and allow you to communicate uh, what you spoke with us on initially. So thank you from the garrison. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. I appreciate it. So I'm going to get a mic check here from my team to make sure they can hear me okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and begin. And uh, so, so I apologize for the, for, for the audio challenges here for coming, coming to you from Jay Bear. So I, I do want to thank uh, Colonel Ruga and, and the Garrison team uh, for putting this on and also uh, Ron Johnson from uh, North Haven Community. Uh, one of the things I just do want, I do want to highlight to make sure that uh, you all understand is that we're, we're going to release, uh, there will be a press release that comes out about the, the first positive COVID-19 case uh, for Fort Wainwright. So we've done a really good job to date, and I think Alaska has done a pretty solid job. And then as uh, Alaska opened up the economy, we, we understood that there would be some risk uh, that, that we would take on. Um, so a soldier and a soldier's immediate family are the first confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Fort Wainwright. Uh, and all individuals have been isolated at home and are following the CDC and public health uh, uh, guidelines on isolation and protocols. Um, and the soldier and his family do, does live on the installation and they're, right now they're going through the process of doing the contact tracing and, and we'll work our way through this. Um, what I want to remind everybody on the, on, on the team here is that the reality is that the COVID and the potential exposure to that is, is not going away. In fact, as, as we look at, as the state opens up, we understand that there's gonna be some risk that goes along with it. Now more than ever, we're gonna be more disciplined in, in our approach on this. So the practice of good hygiene, um, the social distancing, the wearing of masks, and then if you, had, if you are sick, stay home. That, that applies to soldiers and their family members. Um, and talking with Colonel Jenkins, the hospital commander, she also wanted me to emphasize that uh, if you're feeling sick, Right, we're lowering the threshold to come in and get tested. So um, if you're not feeling good and you're symptomatic, uh, or you think you're symptomatic for COVID-19, get to the hospital, get tested. 
um, so we can see where we are in this. Um, the, the challenges won't go away, so we're going to be as disciplined as ever as we work our way through this. I need to remind everybody that uh, we still got a ways to go on this whole thing. And uh, so we knew at some point in time we'd have our first positive cases, and we finally uh, do have those a couple months into this, and we'll work our way through it. And chances are that uh, we'll potentially have some more in the future. Uh, but I think we have a good plan in place in terms of mitigation, but we all got to do our part. Uh, so I want to make sure that, uh, that you all are doing that aspect of this. Uh, and then I just once again, I'll turn it back over to Colonel Ruby. I appreciate all the support uh, from U.S. Army Garrison, Alaska, and everything that you've done for us. Um, so I'll close it out here. Thanks a lot uh, for your time. All right, sir. So, got a little little uh, challenge on the mics back and forth, but uh, we've got us all set up now. So, so thank you. Uh, appreciate your time. Appreciate everybody's time who uh, came in and he was, was either here in person uh, or was online. Hopefully, we answered uh, the vast majority of the questions that you have. If not, you know, please continue to send them in. We will get on and answer those. Um, if you've got continued questions, go ahead and you know send you know most of them. As we said, go to North Haven. Um, if you got questions, uh, you know beyond that, come to the garrison. Come to Miss um, Lori Dallas in the housing office. Um, we will, we can answer one way or the other. We can get all of your questions answered. Um, may not always be to your liking, but hopefully hopefully we can get to good resolution. At least if it's not uh, something you like, you understand why it is. And so, uh, but we do really value everybody who's out there with who lives on post, lives in our housing, um, and we want to make it the best we can uh, with uh, the resources that we have. And so, from uh, with that, I will close things out. Uh, just from uh, the U.S. Army Garrison, we ask that you remain vigilant and stay safe. Thank you. <laughs>